Welcome back to the review of the second season of Justified. Actually, no, I'm kidding. Obviously, that's not what this is. This is Moonshiners of the Apocalypse. This is an interesting theme. Obviously, Appalachia, Moonshine, and the Apocalypse. What does this game do? What kind of game is it? Well, first of all, let me give you some heads up before you want to dive too deep in this video. It is a miniatures style game. Really, you could do it with wooden pieces, but it's a kind of a Euro-esque exploration sort of game it's almost like a 3x type game set as a you're a moonshiner in the apocalypse but you aren't really fighting anyone you're challenging challenging them to drinking contests and things like that so let's take a look at what this game does what it feels like how it shakes out and what it does with some interesting tropes in the board game hobby by just changing the theme a little bit right now So, here is Moonshiners of the Apocalypse all set up. Everyone's going to pick their character. There are a lot of great little miniatures out here. I'll show you these close up in just a little bit. You're then going to get your player card here. All the different player cards there are. A lot of choices, a lot of fun, interesting art in this game, but there are quite a few different choices to choose from. All of them have slight different perks compared to their competitors. There are some tokens and cards that need to go out on the board. You're going to seed the board with, depending on the player count. Uh, with different of these drunkards out here. These are essentially your enemies in the game, uh, which is what's so funny about this theme in general, right? You have enemies here, you have booze cards there. Those are basically better weapons that you can use. You have um, event cards here. There's nothing in the box for this. I'm assuming that's some sort of expansion, and it doesn't mention it in the rules either. And then you have relics up there. Relics are things that you can trade in to get scraps, which are essentially your currency in the game, which you notice scraps trade in for corn, which trades for moonshine, which trades for gold point of this game is to have the most gold by the end of round seven so that you can be on the hot air balloon when it leaves town. That is kind of the whole theme. There are also these building tiles out here. These building tiles, let me zoom in a little bit and get some focus on this. These zooming, these uh, building tiles are things that will help you if you build them and if they're populated and if you have things on them. They're going to give you these resources during the game as they build. And there are just a ton of these different types of resources. Lots of cornfields. There are things like um, the saloon different things like houses here, all just different types of buildings. And what's going to happen is on your turn, and I like this system actually, you're going to have your character start on the peripheral of the map somewhere, right? These are great little miniatures like this dude. Pretty awesome, right? But you're going to have your character start on the peripheral of the map somewhere. So let's just say we start out here. And you're going to take actions. You're going to do four actions in a round. The way it works though is interesting because the four actions are broken up two and then another player will go player, 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 and then your second two actions will go around. I like that because it speeds up the feeling of the game. If you were just doing four actions in a row and then everyone was doing four actions in a row, you really shut down and slow down the, the flow of the game. So I like that. Also a reference card here that tells everyone uh, what they're going to use. There are a bunch of miniatures that are involved as far as drunkard miniatures that you can use if you choose to put these ring bases around them instead of using the small things like this, which are basically the nice tokens that are done per character. Now these enemy cards are going to match up per character. There's the foul mouth bishop. There's the kind hearted loan shark depressed salesman. So there are a ton of different types of enemies out there. Now on your turn, you can explore a hex. And basically what that means is you're going to explore by putting a tile out there. Now, it doesn't give you the benefit until you build it. And to build this is the construct action. It takes four uh, scraps to build level one. And once you do, you get the benefit of there during the production phase. So you can essentially continue building these out. Now, in a multiple player game, you cannot move onto a space that has not been explored on your turn. But once spaces are explored, you can just kind of move all the way through them pretty far. So essentially, you're going to have to explore tiles and get them out there before you can really do it. But the problem is, you have limits on how many times you can do an action during the round. So, for instance, Explore, you can do three times per round. So if that wanted to be your turn, you can do that. There is no cost for movement. Scavenge, you would take a tile that you're sitting on. You'll roll the scavenge dice. These are also the fight dice. They're multi-use dice, which is nice. Roll that and take the number showing. So two, three, uh, five, six, and then this would be a relic. So you would take a relic, which are things that help you during the game. They're also kind of funny, uh, funny little art on these. I'll show you some good stuff with these kind of have so all sorts of really funny cool stuff including some references to actual products like the coffee 
there's a, there's a Maxwell House. There's all sorts of really cool stuff in this game as far as just these relic cards. But it's all just a certain amount of resources up top that it's going to give you. And then the actual just flavor text at the bottom is what that is. And then you can um, you then take scraps for the rest of these things, the numbers. Now, here's the problem. The punch board I have does not have any scraps on it. Apparently, I'm missing a punch board for my game, which has scraps and corn tokens. Otherwise, you would have these little moonshine tokens here, as well as gold. And it's, it's kind of frustrating a little bit because you're kind of missing a resource. But uh, anyway, so that's the other actions you can do. You can scavenge, you can construct, you can challenge a drunkard. So a drunkard is going to get placed out here, depending on the player count. Again, you're going to roll the 20-sided dice to see which of the hexes it's placed on. So it's placed on hex number one, which means that this guy is placed on hex number one, which he drops out right there. If you want to, you can go and challenge him, and it's a fight, essentially. You're, you're fighting by rolling the fight dice. If you have extra booze that you can challenge him to a drinking contest to, these will essentially raise your score up once you open a cask. But once you open a box of them, you have to use all six of them before you can use a different type. So uh, it kind of makes you choose wisely there. But you can challenge this drunkard if you want to, and once he's defeated, you'll gain some scraps as, as, and things as well. So it's just another type of action you can do. It is essentially your fight, though, in this game. You can also trade with Uncle Harding. Once you get into Uncle Harding's area here, you can trade uh, scraps for corn, corn for moonshine, and moonshine for gold, as well as you can trade in relics and things like that to get uh, different resources as well. But that is essentially the whole game during the day phase. Now, the night phase, you're going to do production. First of all, if there are any survivors, and you notice that these will produce little survivors and things like that, when survivors show up, you can uh, those will turn into drunkards in the middle of the night. Also, you can keep survivors um, for you. You can redistribute them where they go because the more survivors on a building, the better they go, or the better they produce. The drunkards also will move. You'll do production. So if any of these buildings produce, if they're level one or level two, you'll get those goods. Whoever owns it will get that. And then you... Uh, the new drunkard arrives, so you'll flip a card up, roll, put it out there, and then advance the hot air balloon. And then you just kind of rinse and repeat. When the drunkards move, you're going to roll these dice. This is for a green drunkard. They're a little bit more docile. You have a sad drunkard here. They're a little, also more docile. And then an angry drunkard, so they're harder to beat. But that just tells you where he's going to move. So if I rolled southeast on this one, obviously there is no south. Well, there's southeast. I can go into there. He would move into that space. Now, what happens is if there's a drunkard there, certain things, certain detriments happen, like bonuses don't work as well, or I'm sorry, production doesn't work as well and things like that. But that is essentially the game. You're going to do that over and over for six rounds. The person with the most points at the end of the game, I'm sorry, the person with the most gold at the end of the game wins. If you're playing the solo mode, you're playing in a race to get 20 points. Uh, but that is how it's played. And other than that, Moonshiners of the Apocalypse. So that's it. That is, in fact, Moonshiners of the Apocalypse. It's an interesting take on a... I, I feel like it's a hybrid between Amerithrash and uh, Euro because you are building buildings and you're getting resources during your production phase, but you're also going out and fighting and rolling dice, so it's a nice hybrid. Um, it's got a good look. It's got a good aesthetic to it. I really enjoy the way this game looks. All of the character art is just funny. It's, it's cute. It's interesting, but it's also... Uh, it's really well done, and it translates to the miniatures really well, especially the big, big, big guy. His miniature looks fantastic, and that's a lot of detail on a small miniature. So uh, the board looks nice. The presentation in this game looks very good. The individual cards for the relics, the uh, different tokens and things like that. I really like the way this game looks on the table. It just is a good-looking game. I will knock it for a couple things, though. In the rule book, it shows meeples out there. But instead of meeples, you get chipboard, punchboard. Um, now, it's fully painted. It's fully an image, but it doesn't look to me as good as the meeples do out there, and it's actually harder to see them versus the houses, the wooden houses, and the wooden meeples. So uh, just keep that in note. There is a little bit of presentation discrepancy between the rule book and this. But as far as everything else, I really enjoy how this game plays. The mechanics seem solid. You're doing the exploring. You're going out. You're fighting. You're trading in resources. You're producing. You're kind of building your own empire network. But because of the simple twist of this isn't fighting zombies, which you could easily have reskinned this to be fighting zombies in the moonshine, be guns with bullets, let's just face it. It's not. It's interesting because you're doing something different. You're getting moonshine and challenging people to drinking contests and putting them under the table. It's clear that this could have been reskinned re to be something else, but I like the fact that they went with something different. And that is just 
that's a perfect example how theme can really change a game because this could have been zombies, it could have been uh, werewolves, it could have been vampires, it could have been anything like that, but they managed to pull it off in a silly sort of theme that's actually not violent at all. There, there are no weapons in this game. Yeah, your characters are holding them, but you're not doing anything with it. You're challenging them to drinking contests and things like that. So it's funny how just a little tweak of theme can change the whole feel of a game that could have been done almost tropishly with other games. So well done on theming of this game. Mechanics are pretty solid. I mean, there's a lot of dice to roll. There's a lot of movement and things like that, but it's basically you're controlling and mitigating everything by having um, by having the buildings out there that are already gonna help you produce the resources you need, so you're not necessarily gonna have to worry about that. I like that movement is not an action. You get to move across spaces that are explored. I like that the solo mode feels really good for a solo mode. So there are a lot of things to like about Moonshiners of the Apocalypse, a discrepancy in the presentation aside. But uh, if you can get your hands on this, go check out this game. I really think you're going to like the mixture of the two of these kind of Euro and Amerithrash feels to where you're not getting this, well, we've done that before. It's not Dead of Winter reskinned. It's really well done. They've done a great job by integrating theme into the game, even though it's mechanics that are pretty familiar in everything that we do. Um, and that's the other thing. I really like the fact that you take two actions, then somebody else goes, then somebody else goes. And then, that way you're not taking all four actions, four actions, four actions. That speeds up the game and you're still getting to do all of your actions. Plus it adds an incredible amount of strategy. Think, well, wait a minute, I've only got two to do before they go. And I really need to go fight that drunkard as opposed to letting them take care of it. So a lot of strategery there. Yes. Uh, between those two actions versus four actions. I like that kind of thinking in gaming. It's how can we make the actual turn experience better for the player. So well done, uh, Too Fat to Fly Games. Can't help but think that's a Kevin Smith reference. But uh, go check out Moonshiners of the Apocalypse. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Dice Tower Brian for more videos. Until next time, we'll see ya. You'll never leave Harlan alive. Perfect. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.